So recently I hit 500 hours on GP bikes in just over a year and it is very very popular in the MX bikes community to kind of put up these videos of checking in how you've improved over such a length of time in the game. It's very common to see videos titled what I've learned in 10 hours of MX bikes, 100, 300, 500, 1000 hours. So I am going to make my own one. I very very seldom see any content on the YouTubes of this beautiful game called GP Bike, so I like to put out as much as I can at all times. And a lot of it's probably not helpful to everyone, but I like to help as many players at the best way possible by like giving tips and explaining some things that aren't really well explained in the game or are not well known about the game. So today's video, what I've learned in 500 hours thereabouts about the game. So straight away, we're gonna jump into the settings. Now, I've done a full in detail setup of the settings of your controllers doing profile i will link that video in the description if you are looking for a more in-depth today i'm just going to run through a small two things in the graphic options just to make the game run better and fix a few issues that you probably don't know you're even having but if you are looking for a full in-depth um tutorial on how to fix the game and make controller setups and stuff like that check out the description there'll be a video there for that now Number one thing in today's video, if you don't remember anything, please, for your own sake, remember this. Go into your settings like I did, go to graphics, and you'll see here, textures. Set this to high. If it's not already on high, bang it on to high, save it, and be done with it. If that's all you learn from today's video, well enough. That will make a big difference. When people join your session, if you don't have this set to high, the game can stutter and even freeze up to 10 seconds. I had a big issue with this when I first got on the game, and also on MX bikes when I did not know about this. So straight away, do this it's easy it's not really intensive on your pc even if you have a poor enough pc we'll get to something in a second that will be better for lower end pcs but just prioritize this completely in your graphics you can turn down all these filterings and stuff like this in your model details stuff and that'll be better for your pc but it won't affect the uh, connectivity in other areas so again bang this to high be dominant next up if you do have a lower end pc now GB bikes isn't the most optimized of games. I have a pretty hefty PC. And even at the best of times, I struggle to get 60 to 100 FPS in a league race. It's just not ideal. It doesn't run well. Um, it's a bit annoying, really, because the net code and everything is pretty good. But then the frame rate can leave it down at times. But if you are someone with a smaller budget PC or a gaming laptop, whatever, Number one thing I would do to get FPS is turn off your shaders. Now it turns off HDR and also if you have HDR on, turn this off. My opinion, which is personal of course, it doesn't make the game any bit better looking. But what it will do is add these small black dots of like dead cells on the screen. If you're looking for something to make the game better, try out Reshade. Reshade is much better for changing the overall color and the color of the game. So if you're going for something that you want a bit darker brighter true reshade there's loads of different presets and they all work across the Piboso game so if you set it up for gp bikes you can take the ones off of mxb mods which are more in depth and better in my opinion and just apply them to this game they'll work perfectly good so straight away have that off if you have it already on it does make anything it'll definitely slow down your pc and it won't look better or really do anything for you next up shaders now shaders do make the game look a massive bit different in terms of graphic fidelity it does look nicer there's more reflections everything just looks nicer now if you could run it run it but straight away it will eat into fps and overall power usage on your pc so a lot of times when i'm league racing turn shaders off it does turn off reflections in the background now shadows again if you're really struggling turn these off and then start to drop these down one by one and just see how you get on a lot of tracks you'll notice that there's three or four corners that eat fps you're never going to get a perfect but overall doing these steps will just help with a more consistent gameplay and overall just improve the gameplay and just improve the fun really so my third and final tip before we get into the on track action is to change your compatibility mode from windows 8 or windows 10 or whatever it is to windows 7. now what this will do will completely eradicate any game crashes and when you join the server you won't get infinite sync and basically you join first time get in every time first time it completely changes the way you can play gb bikes online it's so good so how you do this is you find your drive whatever it is installed on gb bikes that is so for me it is my main drive so for me it's on steam so it's in program files it's in steam steam apps common 
and locate GP Bikes, and this is your main GP Bikes directory. From here, you want to find GP Bikes.exe. So, this for is your main launcher of the game, so your actual program here. Right click that, go to properties, and then you go to this tab here compatibility. So, you'll see I already have it done. What you will probably see is not have this ticked, and it probably will say Windows 8 or anything higher. For me, it was on Windows 8, and that causes big issues. The only thing I will say about this is that it doesn't work for some reason with VR. Now, it appears to be Steam VR. I'm not sure if every headset has issues with it, but I know personally I've had issues and someone else has issues with them before. So try this if you are a VR player and try it. But if your game doesn't want to launch in the VR headset, this is your reason if you've changed this. But tick this box, pick Windows 7 and say goodbye to Endless joining leaving joining leaving and crashing so we're going to jump over now to some on track action and just finish off with some tips on writing so just a couple of things before we get on track in your settings menu you can change a lot of it like i mentioned in the start of the video there is a full guide in the description but don't be afraid to play with the controls my controller setup isn't going to work perfect for everyone so you have to find your own now it's very annoying i know a lot of people watch these videos hoping that they get just something they can input into the game and initially gets better and they're better and everyone's happy really in real life that's not how it works you have to kind of trial and error it yourself and figure out what works for you these setups i have or settings in this controller menu here is pretty much what i run if you want to copy and try it out i like i said in the full video i go through everything so you can see all my inputs and everything i've done and i explain why in that video but like i said it probably won't perfectly for you where for me it's dialed down to my style my preferences and everything like that so just wanted to get that out there before we move on but now we're going to go to the setups now let's go back to the default for a second every bike will have a setup window obviously you usually have these five tabs ecu other which is geometry and a steering napper nine times out of ten drive trains your gearbox you'll have your clutches you'll have your gears primary ratio stuff like that i haven't done a full uh, setup guide on this game if people would like that let me know in the comments i can definitely do it because uh, i do spend a lot of time in the setup window here doing little tweaks for the bikes uh, as much as i do like riding but the big thing for me when i got this game someone told me when i was struggling with the brakes feeling basically too strong that i was stopping kind of top racking ever was to change the front leverage now the way it was explained to me is the more leverage you have the less braking pressure you have at all times so technically the higher if someone could ride with 16 mil leverage you actually have more braking performance now it's more aggressive what is the word i would use so you can't be as aggressive on the controller through the rider and through the the handlebars and stuff so for me i can be more aggressive at 20 mil leverage and i'll break people with 15, uh, 18 and 16 so for me i've gotten quite good and consistent with this because i use it on every single mod i always choose the highest front leverage and it's really really changed the game for me now i see a lot of people online I'll be just joining the session, finish it off a cup of tea or whatever. I jump into the replay cam and I watch them and the bike is on the move on the brakes. I just know for a fact that they haven't a controller set up right. They don't know enough about the setup to set the bike up right. And these little things really change how you feel. And they won't give you like four seconds a lap and make you as quick as the fast guys. But what they will do is they'll just settle the bike down. You'll be able to focus on hitting the apexes, getting your entry speed right, getting on the throttle the right time. And just then you can start to build as a better rider and a better player. But when the bike is moving so much and every one in three lap you crash at that corner because when you get on the brake you have small bit of lean and your leverage is wrong and you don't have the right setup of the controller it is just an avalanche of things that are going to go wrong and you're going to really struggle to get any better at the game and if you do get better at the game you're kind of getting better in, in the wrong way you're getting better at kind of catching the bike from its mistakes instead of improving at corner entry your corner speed your racing lines figuring out your brake marker so try out this this is the number one thing you can do obviously putting in softer tires less fuel is going to make the bike quicker overall but that is kind of a superficial this will make you quicker and more consistent everywhere it'll just help at every track and nearly every mod has some sort of leverage change you can do it the rear as well now the rear is on the master cylinder so it's just called differently so it's slightly different mass cylinder but it has the same effect so it's all good in there now like i said if you want a full setup guide let me know in the comments and i can go through everything here and go a bit more in detail of what all the rake angle and your swing arm length does and lastly in the setup window don't worry on your ecus too much now in this mod it is the motor gp historical mod i believe it's called because these were in early 2000s, 2004, 2006 bikes, their ECUs are pretty limited. They only have four options for 
traction engine and anti wheelie now if you are to ride the modern day superbike 22 mod you'll have 15 traction 15 anti wheelie and i believe 10 or 12 engine brake so you've much more customization there but my tip for electronics is not just to whack it on full traction the whole point of traction control is to cut cylinders off when the wheel at the back spins which basically you lose power now does it make it easier to ride yes it doesn't make you faster not exactly it's not a direct science it's not linear from more traction equals faster there is a point where you can have too much traction it cuts too much power and you lose drive it's a big thing in real life getting the slip angle right and getting the chain tension right and getting that drive out of the corner without going too technical um, it's the same with the engine braking, having too little, not good enough, having too much is not good either. So you need to play with these a lot. A lot of people just whack it on 5, 10, 15, whatever the max is, and they go in. You just see them come out of the corner, you can see, if you watch them in the replay, you can see their uh, throttle just kind of bouncing in the replay because the traction is just completely cutting in and overriding all their control. As well with your throttle inputs, you want to be smooth. You want to have a nice consistent throttle through your finger. You don't want to be going from 20, 40, 80, 100 percent. You want to kind of 15, 30, 35, 50, that kind of much slower gradual jump. Of course, when the bike is upright and you're on third gear, then you can start to open it right up. But the best riders do this second to none, they just have a naturally good finger for doing this kind of nice throttle figure and then the same on the brake, they're not absolutely going from 0 to 100 on the brake, it's the way the fast guys ride, it's kind of annoying for some people because some people like to think that they brake like Marcus when they're late in the brakes and the bike is moving, funnily enough Marcus is pretty smooth in the brakes, he just brakes so deep that the bike moves on him, it's all... It's all superficial when you realize they are all ridiculously smooth. Some of them just ride slightly different, which makes them look like they're absolutely wild. Like Jack Miller's throttle control is immensely good compared to anyone on the planet. But for a MotoGP rider, people think he's wild and he spins it up all the time. Now, he probably drifts a bit more than the average rider, but that doesn't mean his throttle control is on or off. He's still absolutely silky smooth, but just that maybe certain degrees of lean, he likes a few more RPM and a bit more throttle control. Again, the Aussie kind of... Uh, flat tracking style so for me a good consistent throttle is better than having a high traction just whacking it on to get back to the original point that i was wobbling on about uh, launch control steve i'd avoid these they don't really work properly but the main things are your traction your engine brake and your anti wheelie again the same kind of thing applies for anti wheelie having it too high will cut cylinders your bike will drop down the front end and then again you'll get back on the throttle and if you are pinning it coming out of a corner you'll have this yo-yo effect of Wheelie, anti wheelie cuts in, bike drops. Wheelie, anti wheelie cuts in, bike drops. It's going up, down, up, down, up, down, and it's not going forward essentially. So, if you actually run high traction, high anti wheelie, you can get a situation where the rear wheel is cutting because you're getting anti wheelie cutting in and traction cut in, and the bike goes nowhere. So, try out low ones of these and try to be smoother controller. That is one way to get much quicker at this game. Now, it's not going to be something you do in like one session, it will take time to learn to be more precise with the throttle and also not to just whack it on if it is a muscle memory of long time so we're gonna jump into the on track action now where i have one thing i want to show you about the brakes mainly and the uh, just to finish up the video there so the last thing i want to show you is braking you know, now a lot of people are over braking on this game but they don't realize it and what i mean by that is you'll see me coming into this corner now i'm trail braking the whole way in at this point now i should release the brake about here what that will do it'll lean the bike over more and i get more corners but you can see just about now is when i've released the brake I essentially have run extra wide because I'm trailing the brake. Now, when you're braking, you have inertia on the bike, and especially turning in, you're making the bike do something it doesn't want to do. So, applying a braking force will want the bike to go forward, while instead you're wanting to go right or left. So, what you want to do is take as much force as off the bike. We'll see now here again in this clip as I come into turn one. We're going to brake, trail braking into the corner. Now, again, this will take a lot of time to get used to. I explained this to a lot of people, and a lot of people can't do it off the bat. You can see them trail braking, trail braking, and just there, you can just see the bike kind of squat down and turn. That's when I release the brake. But you can see I've gone just enough wide that if someone had a nice corners being there underneath me, they could just close the gap and maybe line me up for the next corner. Now, in this example here, you'll see me release the brake nice and early. And what that will do is allow the bike to just sit on its suspension, It'll allow it to sit nicely and turn naturally without extra force and extra inertia being applied. To it. So by that meaning, you will get a more consistent corner. You get a tighter corner radius. You see, I release the brake around 
here you could just see the bike kind of pivot and sit down i get extra lean earlier which means i can carry more entry speed my mid corner speed is higher and i also get out of the corner much better you can see i'm much tighter to the curb or to the uh, astro turf on exit if you can manage to do this lap after lap you will gain so much time you can see once again now this is not what to do trail braking trail braking i should have released the brake already a lot of people think they're running wide and now they release the brake and already at this point i'm nearly at the end of the curb i've just rolled away from them so this is a massive thing people are doing and they just need to get out of the habit because they will lose so much lap time for it so everyone i am going to end it there for today's video i hope you have enjoyed now there has been a lot of explaining in this video and a lot of kind of in detail stuff so if i didn't explain something in enough detail or you don't understand or you want information about something else please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section down below and i'll try to get back to you and answer your questions as best as possible now i play gb bikes pretty much every single day i'm constantly learning so expect to see more videos like this in the future because this game you learn so much by playing it and just getting into the getting deep with the game and stuff so you really learn more and more and more is the more you play so again i do advise everyone just to play the game try and enjoy the game and just try to understand what they're doing just think about what they're doing as well because a lot of things that you've seen in this video have been me kind of thinking why is this guy quicker what's he doing to get better exits better entry oh he can turn so much better oh he must be releasing the bike oh geez the bike turns just having these small little tweaks to your brain to be thinking not just being on right this guy is 0.7 a lap quicker he must be braking later than me in every single braking zone i'm now going to break later and then you're running wide everywhere and now you're like geez i can't even get near my own time now and this guy is 1.7 quicker me i've lost a second what am i doing wrong things like that can get frustrating i know what it's like when people are so much quicker and you're like jesus that lap time is just something that you cannot see but if you can apply some of these tips obviously not the ones outside of the on track ones we showed today they'll only kind of help the the running of the game and the performance and just the overall kind of quality of life really is of the game a lot of the menu ones and the compatibility windows 7 mode stuff like that but the actual on track stuff and the, the setup and stuff like that if you can apply them to the game you not only become more consistent you will just get a steadier base to build on and like if you if you're going to build a house you don't build it on a rocky bumpy base if you can build a good foundation and build upon your skills like that you will improve hand over fist and that's what i've tried to do in the 500 hours has definitely shown off because i remember when i first got into this game i could barely turn a lap and now i'm doing league races and winning and doing all sorts of good things so like i said put the practice in trying to applicate or apply the tips you've seen in videos and other videos out there as well not just my own videos there's plenty of other content but yeah i'm going to stop rambling on now i'm going to let you go thank you for tuning in any questions like i said drop a comment down below and i should see you all in a not so distant future thanks for watching see you soon